Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to continue our research into motors. Now, in a previous video, we looked at what happened when you have a current carrying conductor sitting inside a magnetic field, how that conductor is going to behave. And we saw that that conductor will try and move out of the magnetic field. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to build on that information a little bit and we're going to try and figure out which way the conductor will move. And we're going to do that by considering what we refer to as Fleming's left hand rule. So let's bring the camera in and we'll have a look at what that looks like. So as we said in our introduction, uh, we saw in a previous video that if we have a conductor that sits inside a magnetic field, so you can see we've got a magnetic field and an aluminium conductor, so there is no magnetic attraction between those two whatsoever, we can see there that if we pop this conductor inside a magnetic field and then pass electricity through that conductor, such as we've got here, so we've got a DC supply and I'm going to push current through the conductor in that direction, the conductor should move out of the magnetic field. And we also saw that if we swap over either direction of current flow or we swap over the magnetic field, what do you think the conductor is going to do? Let's have a look. It moves in the opposite direction. Now the key to understanding what we're doing in this video is to try and figure out which way that conductor is going to move. So let's figure that out now. So let's pop the conductor back inside the magnetic field there so we can see what's going on with it. Now, if we use what's called Fleming's left-hand rule, and this was something that was uh, thought up by John Ambrose Fleming to illustrate what's happening with the motion of the conductor here, we can see that we need to hold our fingers in this position. So if you kind of make an L shape there with your thumb and forefinger, and then have your second finger sticking out uh, at right angles to your palm, you can see there that your thumb, your forefinger, and your second finger are all at right angles to each other. And that's really important because that illustrates what's happening inside our circuit here. So each finger has its own specific uh, reference, its thing that it is uh, referring to. So in this instance, the first finger represents the direction of the magnetic field. So first finger field. So they all start with F, first finger field. And we know that the lines of magnetic flux inside this magnetic field go from north to south. So on the bottom here, you can see we've got our north pole at the bottom and the south pole at the top there. So in this instance, we're going to have our forefinger pointing in the direction of the magnetic field. So it's pointing straight up from north to south. So that is indicating the direction of the magnetic field from north to south. What we then do is we assign our second finger to represent current. So again, just as you have first finger flux, we can think of this as second finger being the current. So you've got a C buried in the middle there. So second finger is the current. And in this case, because we've got the positive rail up here and the negative rail down here, the current is flowing through the conductor in this direction. So therefore, my second finger is going to point in the direction of current flow through the conductor like that. And then that just leaves our thumb, and in this case our thumb, which has a m sound at the end of it, represents the movement of the conductor. So now, in theory, if I press the button to energise the circuit, we can see that the conductor should move in that direction, the direction that my thumb is pointing in. So, the conductor should move this way. So let's press the switch and see what happens. Indeed, it does move that way. So just to illustrate a point, we can reverse the direction of the conductor by reversing the direction of either the current or the magnetic field. So let's flip the magnetic field over. So now we've got the North Pole at the top and the South Pole at the bottom. And what we're going to do is put our conductor back inside the magnetic field. Now, if you're struggling to figure out which way your first finger should be pointing for the magnetic flux, here's an additional little tip. Think about this, knuckle north. So your knuckle goes where the north pole is, which then indicates that the magnetic field is going from north to south. So I've got my knuckle where the north pole is, and I'm pointing towards the south pole. So that's just a handy little memory aid to help us remember that. Again, our second finger represents the 
current. So we've got the current going still in this direction through the conductor because we've got the positive terminal up here. So the current is flowing around that way. So what that means now is if we look at the position of our thumb, we can see there that the motion of the conductor represented by the thumb, remember they've both got the m sound in them, thumb and motion. That means that the conductor should now move in this direction. So it should off, go off in this direction following the direction that my thumb is going in. So let's press the trigger and see what happens. And indeed the conductor does move in the direction that my thumb was pointing in. And just to reinforce this one more time, we'll keep the magnetic field the same now. So we'll put the conductor back inside the magnetic field. But this time what we'll do is we will change the direction of the current flow. So you can see there now I've reversed the polarity of the DC supply. So now the current is going to go this way through the conductor. And what that means is we need to align our hand up properly. So do you remember what we've got? First finger field or flux if you like, first finger flux, whichever one you prefer. When you're lining this up with the magnetic field, remember knuckle north. So we've got our knuckle where the north pole is and we're pointing our finger towards the south pole to line up with the lines of magnetic flux. And now what's changed this time is that the current, this is quite a painful one for me, so I'll need to stand up for this one. The current is now going in this direction. So your second finger is the current and it's going off in this direction. And my thumb is now the direction of motion, which means that when I press the trigger, the conductor should go in that direction. So let's press the trigger and see what happens. And indeed, it moves in that direction. So hopefully that's helped to clarify what Fleming's left-hand rule for motors is all about. It helps you to find the direction of the motion of a conductor that has current passing through it when it sits inside a magnetic field. However, when we come to do exams, the question on the screen might not look like this. It might use a symbolic representation of a magnetic field and a current carrying conductor. So what we'll do now is we'll cut to some symbols that you might see come up in your exam things that we've seen before in previous videos to indicate direction of current flow in a conductor, and that'll help us to understand how to answer those exam questions correctly. So what we've put on the board here are some examples of things that you might see coming up in an exam. So we illustrated how to use Fleming's left-hand rule on the Loctronics board, but this is more what it'll look like in an exam environment. So you can see here we've got uh, two bar magnets on the left and right-hand side of the screen, so we're just going to take these one at a time. So for the purposes of this, we're going to imagine that this isn't here, so it's not affecting the magnetism that's going on up here. And sometimes in an exam, you might only see half of this. So you might just see the south pole marked up without that bit there. And you might only see the north pole on this side with that bit missing. So it might look like this or it might look like they've been blanked out. So let's figure out which way the conductor is going to move. Bear in mind here, we're talking about a motor. So we're putting electricity in and we are getting movement out, which is kind of the definition of a motor. So the exam question might be something like, in the diagram shown below, which way will the conductor move? That gives you an idea that it's a motor, which means it is Fleming's left-hand rule. So let's have a look at this top drawing and get it all lined up. So we know that our first finger is the flux, that represents the north to south, and we put the knuckle at the north. Now bear in mind we're interested in the magnetic field between the magnets, not what's going on around the outside of it. So if I come over this side, just so I don't have to damage my arm, we can see here that we've got lines of magnetic flux will be going from north to south here, knuckle north, north to south. And then you can see from the cross in the circle there, that means that current is going away from us. Now, if that's unfamiliar to you, if you've not seen that before, please go and watch another one of my videos on Joe Robinson training that explains what these symbols mean. But for now, that cross means that current is going away from us. So therefore, our second finger is going to represent the current flow going into the board, away from us there. And therefore, we are going to see that our thumb, which is the motion of the conductor, we can see that this conductor is going to move up and out of the magnetic field. So in the drawing at the bottom of the screen here, we can see that we've got this similar arrangement, but actually what's happened now is that the magnetic poles have been switched over. So what difference is that going to make to the motion of our conductor? Well, again, let's use Fleming's left-hand rule to figure out which way the conductor is going to move. So now we've got lines of magnetic flux going from north to south. So if I put my knuckle at the north again, I need to come over this side of the screen so that I can line my hand up properly. We're going from north to south, first finger flux or first finger field if you like. 
from north to south, I've got my knuckle at the north and I'm pointing to the south pole between these two magnets. Now the current, again, we've got a cross there, which indicates that the current is going away from us. It's going into the board here. So I'm going to now have to twist my hand around to get my second finger, which represents the direction of current flow, is going away from us like that. And then my thumb, which has a m sound at the end of it, is the direction of the motion of the conductor or movement of the conductor. So we can see that in this case, the conductor is going to move downwards out of the magnetic field. So we can clearly see that by switching the direction of the magnetic fields, we've changed the direction that the conductor is going to take out of those magnetic fields. So we've made some small changes to the image that you can see on the board here. All we've done is actually change the direction of the current flow through our conductors. So now we've got a dot, which means that current is coming towards us. And again, for a deeper explanation of those symbols and what they mean, please have a look at a different video on Joe Robinson training in the Magnets and Magnetism playlist. So the current is now coming towards us. So what difference is that going to make to the direction of the motion of the conductor? Well, again, let's get our fingers lined up. So we've got uh, the direction here in the top drawing is from north to south for our magnetic field. So our first finger field or first finger flux is pointing from north to south. Knuckle at the north and we're pointing to the south. And now the current, which is represented by our second finger, is coming in this direction. It's coming out of the board. So that means that I've got to twist my hand around to show that the current is now coming towards us out of the board like that. And that means that the direction of motion represented by my thumb is going to be downwards. So that conductor is going to move down out of the magnetic field. And finally, we'll just look at our last drawing at the bottom here. Again, I need to come onto the other side of the screen in order to get my forefinger lined up nice and simply. So here we've got first finger flux going from north to south. We've got our second finger representing the direction of current flow. And the current here you can see by the dot is coming towards us out of the board. And you can see there that the direction of motion of the conductor is going to be going in that direction. So the conductor is going to move up and out of the magnetic field. Just a little tip for exams. Very often, not always, but very often the exam will be laid out something like this. The question might look something like this. And really, you've got two options for the movement of the conductor. It's never going to go between the two magnetic fields here. So in this case, it's not going to move left to right. It's only going to move up or down out of the magnetic field. And therefore, if you've got a multiple choice question and two of the answers are clearly in directions that the conductor cannot go towards the magnets, that just leaves you with two clear choices. In this case, the conductor is either going to move up or it's going to move down. So if we were on who wants to be a millionaire, we'd be able to take a 50-50 lifeline and we'd be able to see that actually we've massively increased our chances of getting that right. So again, it can just help you to kind of crystallise your thoughts before you then use the uh, Fleming's left hand rule that we've been talking about for motors. So in this video, we saw how Fleming's left hand rule relates to the direction of motion of a conductor inside a magnetic field when we have current passing through the conductor, which is the underpinning principle for how a motor operates. And we're going to use this principle of Fleming's left hand rule when we start looking at motors to indicate which direction the uh, motor will turn in. So more on that in a future video. What we're also interested in is being able to answer those exam questions. So remember the cross in a circle means that current is going away from you. The dot in a circle means that current is coming towards you. And from that, we can apply Fleming's left hand uh, rule for motors. Now, what we also need to think about is Fleming's right hand rule. There is a right hand rule as well, which applies to another type of electrical machine. And we're going to be looking at that in the next video in this series. So for now, all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching.